here is the video on properties of parallelograms. Now, um, I'm not going to do a video over all of the notes. I'm just going to kind of talk about what the properties are. Okay, um, there's just some basic things. I think you guys know all of them. Maybe a couple you learned today that you didn't know. All right, so let's just start. All right, parallelogram. Now, this par parallelogram might not look perfect. I apologize for that. However, if it's a parallelogram, a couple things have to be true. All right, the first thing and most important is that opposite sides have to be parallel. Okay, so that's the first one, is opposite sides parallel. Okay, so that means that this side is parallel to this side, and the opposite sides are parallel to each other. All right, so that is the same, I'm sorry, that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is that opposite sides have to be congruent. So this side is congruent to that side, and this side is congruent to that side. Okay, so opposite sides are congruent. Okay, um, I'm wondering if I can erase this by... I'm just going to get rid of my whole parallelogram. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and erase the marks as much as I can just so we have more space. All right, so those are the first two things. Now, after these things are true, this is not going to work out very well. Okay, so we know that the sides are, opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are also congruent. All right, second thing, third thing actually, is that opposite angles are congruent. So this angle is congruent to that angle, and this angle is congruent to that angle. So opposite angles are congruent. Okay. Uh, I guess this is how I have to do it. Okay. So opposite angles are congruent. All right. Now here's one thing you might not have known, that the diagonals of a parallelogram, so this is one diagonal, this is another diagonal. Okay, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Okay, so this is the midpoint of both of those lines. So that means that this side is now congruent to that side, right, because it bisects each other. And then this side is congruent to that side. Okay, so diagonals bisect each other. That's going to be our next one. So diagonals bisect each other. All right. Now there was one more. Okay. The last one was, I'm going to go ahead and erase this parallelogram and just put up a whole other one because it's going to be so much easier. All right. So here's my kind of crazy parallelogram. Nope, that's not good. Okay. The other one is that adjacent angles or sorry, consecutive angles. So consecutive means if I start here, my next consecutive would probably be this one. Okay, those two angles are supplementary. Okay, same thing if you're talking, if you go consecutive going this direction. Okay, and those two angles are supplementary. Okay, let's talk about why real quick. So we've done, right, parallel lines and transversals, right? So this is congruent, or sorry, parallel to that. Now, if I draw another transversal, okay, that is parallel to this line, I've created a parallelogram, correct? Okay, so if you're looking at just in terms of parallel lines and transversals, right, we've learned that uh, corresponding angles are congruent. We learned that, <coughs> excuse me, alternate interior angles are congruent, right? And the other thing that we learned is that same side interior angles equal 180, right? Because these are the same side and they're on the interior. So in a parallelogram, that means that consecutive angles are equivalent to 180 degrees. So consecutive angles equal 180, or they're supplementary. 
Okay, so these are the big things to remember. Opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, the diagonals bisect each other, and consecutive angles are equal to 180. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do those few questions that are on here, just to verify that you guys got it. All right. All right, so here's number six. It wants us to find the angle measures. I left off angle one is right here. All right, so a couple things. We know, first of all, that opposite angles are congruent. So that means that this angle right here is congruent to this angle. So if this angle is 62, then the measure of angle 4 is also 62. Okay. We also know that this angle right here is congruent to this angle by alternate interior angles. So the measure of angle 2 is 50 degrees. Okay. Now, the other thing that we know is that consecutive angles, so this angle and this angle are equal to 180. So we've got 62 plus 50 is equal to, excuse me, 112. So that's this one plus that one. But now we have to figure out what is this one right here. Okay, so we take 180 and we subtract 112 and we get, sorry, um, eight, sorry, 68 degrees, right? And then we know that if one is 68 degrees, then that means that three is also 68 degrees. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, so this one, not real difficult. So again, first thing we know is that opposite sides are congruent. So if this side is 20, that means that this side has to be 20. So therefore, y is equal to 20. All right, we also know that when the diagonals bisect each other, when they, when they intersect, they bisect. So that means that this one is 5, this one is also 5. And they want to know mp, which is m all the way to p. So 5 plus 5 is 10. All right, all right num number 8. All right, so when we're looking at this, you always kind of want to look for things that you know. You have a y and you have an x, but you need to see, can I solve it by just solving for x or y? So you know that angle D and angle C are consecutive angles of a parallelogram. So that means that 4x plus 6x is equal to 180. So that is 10x equals 180. So that means that x is equal to 18, okay? So if x is equal to 18, if I take my 18 and I plug it in to this, so I get 6x, and I'm going to do 6 times 18. Oh, sorry, I always mess up. 6 times 18, All right? So that means that that angle is equal to... 108, okay? So if this one is equal to 108, that means that one has to be equal to 108 also. So 108, right? 108. Now we can verify this also by knowing if this is 108, angle D has to be supplementary, right? So we can just double check. So 4 times 18 is 72. And is 72 plus 108 equal to 180? It is, so that we know that we are correct. All right, last one. All right, so let's look at this one. All right, first thing we can say is that we know that this angle right here is the same as this angle right here. So we know that this has to be 47 degrees. Okay? And when I'm doing these, there are other ways to do them. I'm just kind of doing them one way. All right, so we know also that now this angle right here and this angle right here have to be supplementary. Okay? So that means I take 81 plus 47 
plus 32, which is 10 1, is 140. Did I do that right? All right, and that should actually be 160. All right, so if those three added up together are 160, excuse me, that means that this one, x, has got to be 20 degrees. Okay, so x is 20 degrees. So now we have to look at y. Okay, so if this one is 20 degrees, this x right here, so if this is 20, that means this also has to be 20, correct? Okay, so that is 20 degrees. All right, if this one is 81, this one also has to be 81. Okay, you can also go around and do it the easy way, which I missed, is that if this is 32, this could also be 32. Right, so you can fill in all the stuff, but we're looking for this angle right here. So we know that this triangle is supposed to be 180, so you would take 47 plus 20, right, which is 67, and then you subtract it from 180, so 180 minus 67 is equal to, okay, y is equal to 113 degrees. Okay, now another cool thing you can do also is that to prove that you're correct on these is the first thing you can do is you can add together all of the angles that you found out. So you can add together 20, 32, 81, 47, 20, 32, 81, and 47. And when you add them all together, if you did it correctly, you should get 360. So why don't you go ahead and check that and see if that's true. All right, so I double-checked it, and it does come out to 360. So that means that we did it correctly. All right, well, tomorrow we're going to talk about um, actually proving parallelograms are, um, or that shapes, quadrilaterals, are parallelograms. So this kind of just gives you the basis. All right, so go ahead and finish up your homework, and then we will check it tomorrow when you get in class. Um, and once you're finished with it, go ahead and take the picture and scan it to Edmodo when you get a chance last night's too. All right, well, you guys have a good night, and I will see you tomorrow.